My name is Millicent Nyawera Kehara, an event planner at House of Events and Entertainment, a graduate of the Wedding Members Business Academy. We, House of Events and Entertainment, offer all event solutions, which include planning weddings and corporate events. We pride ourselves to deliver quality and effective work. The most challenging time is when I had to do a three-in-one event within a period of two weeks, which included a traditional ceremony for the bride in Uganda, an introduction in Nairobi, and a white wedding in Mombasa. But with the experience acquired over the years, we were able to execute it to the client's satisfaction. At WMBA, I got to learn how to plan and execute an event successfully and also the do's and the don'ts of the events industry. I recommend anyone interested in joining the events industry to enroll for classes with the Wedding Members Business Academy because that is where my dream to become a successful planner began. No, so talking about collaboration, yes. uh, how did you go about establishing your collaborations and what are the kind of people you collaborate with? You see, high-end vendors have worked so hard to be where they are. They have sacrificed a lot, uh, sacrificed a lot of things, right? Meaning if you now want to join that party, you have to come in. You have to understand how to come in. You have to be patient and you have to show up be refined, show up, don't be late, don't be this, show up in your designs, do whatever it takes. That's what I did. I would do a small little thing at home, but I would hire proper equipment to get one centerpiece at home to get good lighting, this and that. I would put in extra, extra, extra effort so that Samantha Clifton or Charles Smith or any high-end photographer would want to work with me. Okay. Yeah, it's such a journey, I don't want to lie to you, and it's not an easy one. But I think the, the biggest um, mistakes most of us designers do is to jump the wagon, to think you, you can just wake up and you're there. It's such a process, and you also need a lot of experience. I think experience makes you more mature and understand the road you're going to. Yeah. I yeah. think the generation we are dealing with right now is uh, uh, the Insta generation. Like exactly. today I launched, I announced I'm a florist, and tomorrow um, I just want to be where Mabel is. Exactly. How can I be like Mabel? Mm -hmm. They don't understand the work. I get that a lot also. Mm -hmm. I want to be like you. And I, it's so flattering. I am very humbled by that. But I remind them. Do you know how many years experience I have and I'm still learning too mm -hmm. from people I also admire. Don't jump because the quicker you jump, that's how quickly you fall as well. Okay. Try and the thing with art is art is a process. Art requires refining your heart, refi getting to know your personality requires a lot of learning about yourself, isn't it? Yeah. You don't just assume you know it and you want to quickly jump and a million dollar budgets are now coming to you. No, there is such a building of trust, building of, no, you know, whoever's going to give you that job, they want to know you're going to execute that job. Yes. They didn't properly. get the money just by... Oh, never, yeah. exactly. So... Um, you need to just be patient, you know, to, to, to be patient to, for growth. Mm -hmm. Do you wake up, um, when we give birth to our children, do they jump from one to five? <laughs> Why is it every day? Like, look at how, you know, the funny thing is we ignore nature and the natural way life goes. If we can just pay attention to that and borrow the kind of system like that, your life will move on, you know. I know that um, life is about now, it's about experience, and I get that. But a child also has a process. That's why we what we're now 30 or whatever. You, you started one year, one day old, then they were one week old, then they were uh, five years old, then they were 10 years old, but it was that process they didn't just jump because that jumping can really mess up a lot of things for you. 
Okay. It's not even normal. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about sustainability. All right. I've seen sustainability is big mm -hmm. uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what inspires that and what do you mean by sustainability and how do you infuse it in your design? Okay, that's, thank you. Thank you for asking me that. It, sustainability for me is a very big deal. Um, is of just recent, probably like the last four years, I am 100 no, I'm lying. I'm the. I'm trying to be hundred percent sustainable, but it's it's difficult. We still have plastic and all of that. What it means by being a sustainable floral designer is you are caring for nature. You're giving back to um, some of the products, unfortunately, that we use as floral designers are harmful to the environment. The biggest one that I'm sure you have now heard is the actual oasis itself. The Oasis. Yes, the Oasis is a brand, but the foam, right? It's called foam. foam. Yes. Now, it's made of little plastic fibers that don't decompose, meaning as we're designing, it's just filling up the landfill. It's, it's never going to decompose. It does not decompose because it's plastic. So it becomes a problem to the environment. What we're trying to do with this sustainability is not like we want to change the world, no. We're just hoping that the future gets better, you know, we don't harm it and destroy it completely. And for me personally, what? how can you be a designer, you're taking from nature, but then you're hurting the very nature that's giving you the joy and prettiness, right? So sustainability isn't just the product, it's also um, watching how you're working, you know, taking care of your workers. Um, another big thing is supporting local because you, the less carbon, what is that? Footprint. Car footprint, yeah. The better, right? So I don't necessarily import at all. I would do here and there. I buy local most of the time. I can do a wedding that is 100% sustainable in terms of everything is locally grown. I will support every local grower. I will ask, what do you have? Okay, send, what do you have? In season, send. Coming back to exactly what my signature styling is, when a bride comes to me, that's one of the things I'm telling them. I work with what the season has. Um, I'm a very natural stylist, so is that what you want? If you now want that opulent and crazy and beautiful, sometimes I really can't do it because it's not really speaking about what I believe in and what I stand for and advocate for. So sustainability, um, not just in floral design, I see the world now, many brands are moving towards sustainability. I noticed that Woolies, one, I mean, they, they now have, their packaging is now a reusable um, paper, no, fabric bag that they now give you what you have or you sell it but you can reuse it now so if you can figure out to reuse things that's being sustainable the world needs that right now um i think the world is moving way too fast and i worry a lot that as much as the work is becoming opulent and opulent for me it's i think it's unnecessary, but look, every bride is different. It's their day, it's okay to experience that. That's why it's also okay to live lavishly, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But I think as lavish as you can go, watch what you're hurting. Mm -hmm. If you can practice that way, then yeah. It's, it's, uh, I just think it's, it's good, it's better that way, because we're business, so watch how, what you're doing, yeah. Wow, that is yes. really, really big. <laughs> and we, you know, as we, um, th there's a lot of wastage, I find, um, uh, in the wedding industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things um, that actually has inspired me mm -hmm. to, in terms of pivoting our brand and doing different things is going to weddings. And uh, one of the things that makes me sad is when the wedding is finished and all that beauty is being torn down when you're dismantling it always like it's such an anticlimax for me but yet it has really inspired me in terms of uh, how we pivot the brand but I want to ask you mm -hmm. what do you do with the flowers after the wedding 
So Catherine, let me just, I want to say something about not only you feels like that sometimes, we get that a lot and sometimes it even affects um, brides or clients to pay more for flowers because in the mindset it's like, but they're going to die tomorrow literally. Um, what I then say is you're buying an experience, the moment, because that's what flowers gives you the smells, the way they open. That's why you pay lots of money to go on holiday. Mm -hmm. Are you coming back with the Eiffel Tower in your bag? Mm -hmm. It's that memory that is encrypted that you'll never forget. I was telling my friend, I know she's listening, she took me somewhere yesterday and I told her I'll never forget because the view where I was sitting and I was watching over Nairobi National Park, I can't pack that in my bag. Mm -hmm. It's not tangible. I can't put value to it. If they had asked me to pay money, monetary wise, to see that view, I would have to do it because my heart needs that experience. That's what flowers does. It's unfortunate. They, you, you, you can't really make them last forever. They, they're not, they give you an experience now and it stays with you. You see, when people celebrate their 10th anniversary and all of that, and couples are watching, re-watching their wedding videos, you can almost smell the flowers all over again. You can almost see that experience all over again. It does things to your mindset and all of that. And that's what you're paying for, really, you know? Anyway, um, what was your question now about? So the question was that uh, uh, in terms of years, flowers really they give what, you something I appreciate what do that. we do now but after, after the event mm, mm. talking of sustainability yes that's it yeah. how do you, what do you do with with those flowers yes. and what do you advise your clients you see it's even better if you're not using foam because then everything is in water source right now we have different ways of how we get rid of flowers i suppose um, I know in Cape Town we get a lot of destination weddings, meaning the couples can't actually take the flowers home or whatever with them. At times they have a celebration the next day, we give them the flowers so they keep using them. Um, but some of the flowers that are still fresh, we donate them to hospitals. I am affiliated with quite a few old age homes, hospitals that we then ask, um, we have got these tons of flowers can we donate when that person receives flowers in hospital they don't even know where they came from how do i know it won't heal their heart not physically but what it will do for their spirit is good enough for me it would carry me to want to do it again the next day to know that somebody smiled. The one time, look, I had near-death experience when I gave birth, so I have um, a very soft spot for new moms because I know how emotional it can get. So I actually love going to maternity wards. <sighs> when I give somebody who just gave birth flowers and I see them tearing up, even if they're not a flower person, just makes me want to tear up. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's why I'm doing this. This is why I'm in this profession. It's that feeling, you know. It's it, it, the same feeling I feel when the bride walks into her venue and sees and she lightens up. That alone is unexplainable. Wow. That's why we do it, because it's that experience. So when we give these flowers seriously to somebody who didn't even think they deserve flowers, isn't that amazing, that's you know? Amazing. And to know you as a bride, to know that that's what we're going to do with your flowers. I know you paid money for it, but they're going to go to somebody who needs them in their heart, who just wants a day with the flowers, even if they die tomorrow. It's good enough. Wow. I'm yeah. not sure we are doing that in Kenya. Victor, is that what we are doing in Kenya? No. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, you've given me food for thought. <laughs> yeah, like, mm -hmm. it's not happening. It could be happening, but not on a big yeah. scale. I don't know why, if you think about it, is, but you need to plan also, I think, mm -hmm. as a designer. Mm -hmm. Plan it well, because I know designers, you're very tired the next day. 
So you kind of have to, everything needs planning. You know, our, our system of working has got, we plan it all from beginning anyway. That means by the time we are signing in a bride, we already know mm -hmm. what she wants to do the day after her wedding. Is she staying for an after party? Are they doing like a brunch with family? Must we take centerpieces here and there? Are they literally flying the next day? So we plan better. Okay. Now, if I'm not physically there to rearrange these flowers, my team is there because they know. And we send a different team, the breakdown team, knowing that, okay, they're going to take these bunches, they're going to tie them, and we're going to send a driver to such and such a hospital. It becomes easy, you see, when you pre-plan it. And the hospital is prepared to receive. You phone in advance hospitals nowadays, they don't just allow anybody to show up. So you need to maybe find from like their marketing managers and stuff like that. It takes you to just walk into reception and go like, listen, you know I'm a florist and from time to time I want to bring flowers. How do I go about it? Who do I contact? It's so easy. They'll tell you. And they love flowers. Mm -hmm. Go to an old age home. Go with these big centerpieces in your vases and they say to them, I'll come get my vases after three days. What's stopping you to do that? Wow. Spread the love, because flowers are love, isn't it? Yeah. That's why they're required at a wedding, at a birthday celebration, at any celebration. Why are we needing flowers? Yeah. They are love. Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. So um, we talked about collaborations earlier on. I've seen yes. you've done a lot of collaborations with celebrities, mm -hmm. music videos. <laughs> Uh, talk, let's talk about that. Oh, that is always fun to do. Yes. <laughs> the exposure there is amazing. Yeah. Um, how do I... Which, which, which celebrities have you collaborated with? Oh, plenty. Who can I want your fav that? Let's talk My about favorite. your favorite ones. I think the favorite one was, yeah, it was the video we did for Kelly Comalo's um, video. She did, uh, it two, three years ago? Three years ago, if I'm not correct, yeah. The, 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 her video was amazing, all the other parts. Our part was amazing. <laughs> so we really enjoyed, what I loved about it was um, the impromptu. We needed to create something now and stay for the video and shoot and all of that. So it's, it requires so much thinking and creativity and flowers that are going to stay fresh for the duration of the video. Because you know how it goes with sets. You shoot an entire day. It's mm -hmm. not about just for one hour. They want this clip now, but they want it again in the afternoon. They want it again later. So yeah, I, I had fun doing that. I yeah. really did. Yeah. Yes. Um, We've talked about your celebrity collaborations. Um, now I will get into brides, but before that, I want, uh, what, adv what advice are you giving to budding florists? Hmm. And I also want you to explain uh, decor, where, 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 where is decor and where is floristry? But let's start with the budding florists. The budding florists? Yes. Um, okay, explain further what you really want me to say. Um, someone who is looking at you and they're like, Mabel, I want to be like you. What is your advice? Like, they've just started mm -hmm. and they want to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know you've said it in so many words. Yes. But yes, if you could say that again. <sighs> um, invest in knowledge. You can never go wrong. Um, Ask yourself one question. I think that is a genuine question you can ask yourself alone. Do you want to be ordinary or extraordinary? Your answer will tell you where you must take it. I ask myself in that, <laughs> I knew I want to be extraordinary, right? It meant I needed to do thorough research. I wanted to be like all the other designers out there as well but I knew that I can't just wake up and be them. There's something I need to learn, that they are, and it's a process. Um, yesterday, I was on an international blog teaching and we were talking up. someone actually asked a similar question, like how, how do I get to then be serious? I've just begun, but where, where I want to be taken more serious, like a profession, to be called a professional. What are the things I need to actually do? 
You know, right now I've been doing here and there flowers for friends and family, but I now want to be taken more serious. It was such an interesting question, right? No one, we don't think about these things. And um, we all, you know, came up with the same similar answers. Number one, register a company. Do you know that sometimes just registering a company, you get a heartbeat, you know, it's now real, right? This is now real. Because by registering, you're now thinking more professional. Even if you've got two followers, open up an Instagram page. Instagram is no longer personal and fun and all of that. It's now being used seriously for marketing. You can gain such a lot from that. And find out what it is you can get from that, right? Um, start approaching venues, other people to collaborate with. Start approaching seniors in the industry to say, can volunteer to freelance so you can learn and gain experience. The thing is, I gained so much experience through freelancing. If you freelance for really good people, they will open up space. You will see and learn a lot of things that you can incorporate into your business. If you've never done a wedding, how do you know how to do it? If you've never been exposed to that, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know how that helps. Great. No, no, it does help it's for people who are actually starting. It's yes. really important. Yeah. But what I, the other thing, uh, there's a lot of confusion between what a florist tree does mm -hmm. and the general <laughs> decor. I know there is. That is true. That is true. So, Catherine, it's, it's sad. It's actually true. Um, to be identified as a floral designer, uh, you are identified by what you show the world, then they get to know who you are. So you have to really strengthen that, put the work, you know, if it's flowers, then put flowers, put flowers, but until people are encrypted that, oh, okay, you are a floral designer. Decor nowadays can be used as an upsell. There is nothing wrong for a floral designer to upsell her decor because as you becoming a floral designer years and years of business you realize I don't think there is a designer a floral designer who doesn't actually own vases you are going to be practicing home so eventually you start buying this inventory so if you want to do a side business where you hire these items good for you but can a decorator be a floral designer. So, right? Now it's vice versa. A decorator is somebody who opened up her business. She has a warehouse. She's got everything to hire. They're doing hiring. To They're in rentals. Planners. They're in rentals, literally. They are renting. A decorator is buying in bulk. They have chairs, they have tables, cutlery, crockery, vases, everything. Do you need a skill to be a decorator? Yes, you need to know. You need to study business. You need to know how to operate a business, seriously. You know, other than that, yes, then you're starting to rent your staff coming back. You need your workers, you need that. Do you need skills to be a floral designer? Yes, because that's now art. You are the one designing. So if you're a decorator and you want to get into, to combine that with flowers, invest in knowledge. Learn what floral art is. Otherwise, your floral side is just going to stay ordinary. Because you're making money on the decoration. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to put effort. And then you're going to ask yourself, why is it that sometimes, and I've been asked this question, some of my brides will go rent everything, but this decorator also does flowers, but the bride will say, no, it's okay, I'm getting in a floral designer. Ask yourself why. Because they can see you're, you're, not, uh, you're not a specialist in flowers. You just have it as an add-on. So your advice is if you're a decorator, uh, you need to go and study to be a floral designer. Yes, and specialize. specialize. Have it as a speciality. You also can't do both. You can't. It's impossible. I have a, my own inventory but it's limited only to our brides because we wanna give them custom, we wanna give them something that's not general. It's very rare, right? So I'm a collector mm -hmm. of rare items. And that's why sometimes I get bookings that are very different because they can see they can't find the things that I have. They can only find them at, you know, by me. But I have somebody employed, 
just for that department. I don't even, I collect the design because yeah. I can't do both. You cannot do both. You can't specialize in both. Okay. I have an eye for the art. I understand placements I want it to be. I taught them. They are now using their personality when they're placing the underplates, how you fold a napkin. Mabel is busy designing flowers. I can't be there doing that. You see how mm -hmm. you really can't try and do it all. For a smaller event, yeah, you know, we, we, we do it. We then put everything. But when you want your event to stand out, delegate. Wow, mm. wow. So uh, in this market, in this Kenyan market, the big problem we have is uh, number one, plastic flowers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how is that a problem in South Africa? And number two, people just not thinking, um, you know, floristry, there's no, in fact, other than Lillian, and who teaches floral art, there are very, very few other proper, in fact, there are not more than eight proper floral mm -hmm. designers in a country mm -hmm. like ours. In fact, I can name them. Yeah, and do you know why? Because the thing with flowers, it's a very disrespected medium, unfortunately, because anyone can, in fact, do flowers. I personally don't like them. Do I think they, um, well, we call them like your, yeah, synthetic flowers. Do I think they are wrong? I don't actually look at them like that they are wrong. You know why? Because they, to me, they are reusable. It's like using plastic buckets. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with anyone using synthetic flowers if you can't get access to fresh flowers. Now, my personal opinion is just I love the smell of fresh flowers. I love touching, I love the textures of real flowers. So the competition there, yeah, fresh flowers will beat the synthetic flowers for me. So I'll never settle for synthetic flowers. I don't think my heart will then be or will enjoy floristry if I was only limited to synthetic flowers. But I don't think there's anything wrong with using them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. Um, I hope people will listen to that and we will, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So just to end the business part of the interview so that we can get to the brides. Okay. What would you say are some of your um, business highs? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think you talked about the law and the law, but oh, I don't yeah. know if you have other laws. <laughs> but how, first of all, your business highs, and then you talk about how Corona affected you. Oh, yeah. Then what are your hopes and dreams for your business and the industry? It's a lot of things. It's a lot Maybe of things. Maybe let me I guide know. you. Let's start with your highs. Um, I love your question, how you answered, how you, you, you asked me. It's, it's a lot of things, and I'm going to answer it. Because for me, my answer is actually integrated into each other. Okay. I thought my highs were anything, everything that I did, you know, the, those highlights that happened before COVID, honestly, you know, having to do like a million dollar wedding or travel somewhere and do something until Corona actually hit and I started teaching. Those, were, those are my highs. It's in a funny way. The love I have for my students, my protégés, is my high of my career right now um, because I get to learn from them. And I know I'm teaching them, but then they are hungry for art. They are actually artists by heart. They are so hungry to be so unique, so different. They, and every time I'm talking to them, it's exactly what they needed to hear. And me realizing that I wish I had somebody back in my day to tell me all these things that I'm telling, it could have made a huge difference and also it could have not wasted a lot of time. So as much as COVID really affected my business, the event side, it thrilled somewhere else and it became my career highlights. Wow. Yeah. And so you teach online? I teach online. I teach personal um, courses, like a one-on-one, -on -one, which is a course, um, sort of a program I developed, you know, to really guide somebody understanding from the basic design principles and elements to design approach. 
and mentor them because I also realized they're so scared. You know, you're like, okay, go fly. Nah, it doesn't happen. They really need mentorship. So that makes me so happy. You know, when I'm there for them and I mentor them, they can, and I'm a call away. My WhatsApp is full of my students. They abuse me, actually, in fact. They do because they can just WhatsApp me. What do I do with this? And I can answer, okay, do this, do that. And I love that because I think it will strengthen our industry, really. And I hope as they gain the experience when they also want to teach, they'll remember mm -hmm. their basics, their foundation, and it will encourage them to teach right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are your hopes for the industry? I love that question. And, you know, it's my dream, really. I'm hoping that the industry, the more we advocate for sustainability, the more people will hear and they will know and we can all practice. And I think if we all move towards sustainability, do you know that there is actually freedom of design that comes with sustainability? The thing is because it makes you open-minded. You get more creative. That's my hope, where we don't have to be, you know, Right now in the industry, there's a lot of imitation. It's getting monotonous and boring. But I'm really hoping to start seeing creativity, excitement, and seeing people really taking it more serious like that. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, so one more last question mm -hmm. on the business side. For somebody who's watching you and seeing you on these international platforms, <laughs> I saw this name and I said, on the Floor Society, and I'm like, so how did you get there? <laughs> it came, it? and, and the reason I ask this is, I give <laughs> is because your phone just rang one day, or you actually, <laughs> the last time I spoke to, I asked this question on the webinar, I was asking this lady from uh, Nigeria. She's like, no, you knock those doors, you knock them. Oh my gosh, Nobody is you just answered to... my question. Okay, tell us, <laughs> how did you find yourself? You just answered my question. You go for it. I told you, remember what did I say? I don't settle. <laughs> if I want something, I'm going after it. Um, how did I get on Flow Society? I think my first direction towards Flow Society was me approaching American blogs. Simple DM, hi, hello, I'm here in Africa. Mm -hmm. I like this and this, I love your blog. Do you mind looking over here? You know, we also are very talented here. Just like that, mm -hmm. bold like that. And I'm like, if they don't respond, fine. They've got nothing to lose. You know, if I die, I die. <laughs> Just put yourself out there. Yeah. If they shoot you, they shoot you down, right? Um, and I had a few blogs interested. I had, oh my gosh, I've been featured on so many of, um, especially American blogs. So then that, made, that called attention to educational blogs to look at my page and look at what I was advocating for. And I think I remember getting an email from Christina asking if we can have a chat on Zoom. Then she explained what she does and if I am, so this is not my fifth summit with them. Mm -hmm. If I would like to join, I'm like, ask, don't ask me again. Yes, we're even asking to mm -hmm. say come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so, I couldn't believe that. You know, we in Africa, like you have to teach worldwide now. But the thing with these blogs, they're not only centered around Americans or, or, or Europeans. It's everyone is there. Everyone can also teach there. But what's daunting is that if you're going to teach there, you better know your game. You better know what you're teaching. Because people that are listening there or other educators know their game. You don't just rock up and you're there. You really have to educate yourself wow. and know what you're doing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really amazing. <laughs> really proud to see you there. Thank you. Yeah. So now let's get to brides. Now we want... Oh, yeah. um, oh I love my brides. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you think... I don't know whether I already asked you this. Uh, in terms of the look and feel of a wedding, mm -hmm. why do you think flowers are so important and brides should pay attention right? to it? Right, I know, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Flowers add that ultimate beauty at a wedding, whether we like it or not, you know, they do. So flowers, it's actually a billion dollar industry, I get that. For that specific reason, they remove centerpieces, 
the room looks dead, it looks blank. At centerpieces, there's life because flowers are life. These are, that's why for me, I can't handle synthetic flowers. They are not leaving things for me. They're not gonna give me the same feel fresh flowers gives you. They remove the life. They synthetic. remove the life. As beauty as they are, remember, people that design synthetic flowers are such artistic because they really try to make them look as real as possible. I just feel like the moment I touch and I can't actually feel the real thing, it doesn't give you the same feeling, Catherine, ever. Mm -hmm. it, it really can't. So flowers are life. That's why they are required at these events. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. It's true. So and mm -hmm. what are some of those things that you want and wish brides should have in mind before they contact you? Oh, that's before a they good contact one. Any florist. any florist. Oh, dear brides, dear brides. I think when you sit down, you're engaged. I know you do research. I'm actually talking to the brides, right? They research on venue. That effort you do researching on your venue, your wedding planner, I know you're researching because you're not going to wake up and just hire a wedding planner, do you? You research. Even though you know, if you're a lawyer, a doctor, it's fine. You, you, it's not your industry. It's understandable. Please put the same effort in researching about wearing flowers. Start there. It's a process. Because if you go in blind, you can get cheated. Um, it can be very costly for you. But when you understand, tiny, you, it's just, just a flowers. Just flowers. As much as you're researching about the entire wedding of yourself, do the same with just the flowers. Okay. And my advice I can really give now when you are now researching is try and lean to base your look and feel towards flowers that are in season. Number one, it's going to cost you less money. But if you go lash, 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 you just, if you go direct and you hit your head on pin interest, you're going to struggle because the things you're seeing on pin interest, you are in South Africa. You're looking at pin interest of somebody who designed their wedding in Dubai. The seasons are completely different. The flowers you're seeing there and the flowers that we have here, completely different. So try by maybe make it a vision board, but make it about you just like the style, but not the particular flowers. Then let your florist guide you. Um, Try and listen to this professional. It's like when you, Catherine, let me ask you something. When you go to a doctor, when, when I was pregnant with my daughter, my, my, my gynae made fun of me because, you see, I'm an analytical thinker. That's why my work is so finite. I think of every little element. I, would, I, I went there with a pile of questions and answers also at the same time. And then he asked me, okay, who are you gonna listen to, Dr. Google? Or me. I'm a professional. Then it hit me. I'm like, okay, I have to actually trust him. You will read up pin interest. That's Dr. Google. That's what I mean by that. It can give you as much, but a professional will always give you the best advice there is. Prepare your questions, maybe, you know? If you're not understanding, prepare even as hard as that. That's how you can also serve who's the right florist for you. Prepare the hard question. Then the other thing is identify the florist by their styles, their strength. If you go to a floral designer who, who is bold, who works with like bold colors all the time, and you want subtle colors, you think that's gonna work? That florist is gonna struggle a little bit, you understand? To bring in the softness because their strength is in bold and daring and this and that. If you take that vice versa to a floral designer soft, or like Mabel, whimsical and gardeny and romantic, and you give me gothic style, which is nothing wrong with that. I'm going to struggle to connect to a gothic style because that's not my strength. So you need to also identify. That's why I said it's worth an effort to just do a little bit of homework. Just as much homework you're doing for your venue, your wedding planner, your photographer, do the same for flowers. It just will help you. Understanding what flowers are there. Yes. And also the different styles. Exactly. It will help you, like okay. really tremendously.
Okay, mm -hmm. I see. And uh, so, so what, 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 what happens if a bride comes to you and um, they say, how much do flowers cost? Oh, Should they need get to that, know something right? about budgets? No. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what? I want to be fair here. I know that question is such a, mm -hmm. it goes two ways. Let me be fair as well. We want to know, as floral designers, we actually want to know. I know that the bride knows how much she wants to spend. She may not know how much flowers cost, but when you get married, when you're getting married, when you get engaged, what is the first thing you and your fiance are going to do? You're going to sit down and say, okay, this is how much we can spend. Meaning you already know how much you can spend. And I don't believe that they don't do that. You know why? Otherwise it's a roller coaster. How do you know which venue to approach if you don't know how much you want to spend, right? Otherwise, you're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. You can't suddenly approach a million dollar wedding venue <laughs> and you're an average bride or an average, you know, somebody who wants a lavish wedding go down. You will know where to identify. So I think, yes, they don't want to tell us because they feel we will take advantage of that. And what Fair do you tell enough, to a bride who thinks you um, take advantage? I give them figures. So I give them the choice. Would you say... You're, you want to spend between this much and that much. This much and that much. We give you ticks. And how do we come up with these ticks? I'm a, when you're a brand or a florist or a designer or whatever, how much budgets, what kind of budgets, identify that for yourself first. What kind of work do you want to be known for, right? Do you think you can work with an average budget? If that makes you happy, then put that on your tick box. Those are the clients that you're going to attract. Do you want low end and plenty weddings? There's nothing wrong with that. Do you want high end weddings? That means your tick box is starting really higher. Meaning by the time this client is um, coming to you, they already see, okay, I don't think I belong here. Or you know what, in fact, yes, we can afford this because I know they know. Okay. They just want somebody to help them guide. So, so that's what we do and, and help them kind of, yeah. So, because they will never tell you what their budget is. It's impossible. And I think it's mm -hmm. fair to also give a bride um, amount, like an estimation. If you, mm -hmm. you don't have to give them an entire quotation because it takes time to prepare, but give them something. Because you know what? A bride has a right to shop around. So give them something. But if this bride is shopping around based on price, then maybe they may not be your bride. Because if you're a, a, a designer who's based on quality and design and not really about price, then it's different. But give them something. We always give estimates, you know. Yeah, but you know what you say, it's so controversial to so many brides. I can, I can say, I even me as a consumer of artistic products, mm -hmm. I like art. Um, and art could be even in, I remember one time when I wanted to build, um, to develop a property mm -hmm. and it was the first property I was developing. Mm -hmm. And so I go to see uh, this architect and he's like, so what's I your budget? You. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is the budget? Mm -hmm. So and then after that, I started to educate myself on the price of things. Because we take it for granted that we know the price. And I know that uh, there was one bride who, who felt so offended because, um, and she actually went to another designer. This is happening now, like happening now, mm -hmm. because one of the very talented designer, floral designers, just told the bride, if your budget is less than three million, I'm not working with you. So this bride ve felt very offended and judged. What makes you think my budget? You, 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 the bride was like, felt like judged. Like you think I, I can't afford. And, I would feel like that. And this bride is from one of those heritage money. I um, would feel like that if I was the bride. Yeah. Literally, you are right. And she's right to feel like that, Catherine. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. She's right. Mm. The thing is, remember what I said exactly. Do your research as a New bride, I know you don't know how much flowers cost. There is no way. How do you know that? 
you've never been married, maybe you don't even have, you maybe you're the first one in the family to get married, you will never know that thing. So it's fair to show up to a, a florist and say, but I don't know how much flowers cost. You are not lying, you are being honest. I think it's us, the designers, our approach needs to come with so much grace and understanding where this bride is coming from. My approach really is about educating at the same time so that if they don't book me, the moment they're going to the next vendor, they now have been educated. That's how, they've just been educated and very nicely. So we don't judge you. I'll simply go like, okay, um, I can tell you, flowers are not cheap. Number one, that's, you know, and then we, we're laughing. We say it in a nice way, you know, honey, flowers are not cheap. You must, let's face that day, right? Um, what you're describing about your wedding is, is amazing, it's beautiful. Most of them will send you pictures anyway. And you're going like, the pictures you're looking at, because um, just, that costs you nothing as a designer to just educate, you know? Just, like, listen, the pictures you've sent me um, are so beautiful, but would you mind just ticking a box, the, you know, would you say your budget is between this, this, and that? Um, I just wanna see where, where, you know, ultimately it's about how much you can afford, right? Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we have a minimum standard entry because of, we want to maintain quality work. Mm -hmm. So we have to start from here. Again, you're already educating, they now know. Oh, for quality work, it kinda has to start there. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't book you, you've already educated, but in a nice way. Mm -hmm. So when they, if they come back and, and t some, they actually do sometimes, and then you go like, okay, thank you, but this now pictures you've sent me are off your budget, completely off. Now, you clearly can afford to work with us. Can we maybe give you other ideas that are within your budget? Now you have the game. Mm -hmm. Now you can move forward. But if they don't come back to you, they are clearly still trying to figure out themselves. They maybe haven't, and unfortunately brides also, they don't do homework, they're too excited. But I think the best thing you would have done for that bride, even if she doesn't come to you, by just giving them that one sentence, you've educated her. Mm -hmm. And so you've when done they well go, for the industry. Yeah. So it's a collective thing It's for a collective thinking, yeah, exactly. Because mm -hmm. this budget thing is such a, it's a controversial thing. The brides have the right of their own. The florists are thinking they have the right of their own. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to meet somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I also think so that uh, it's a branding issue. If consistently you're getting brides under a certain budget, you need to look at what is your website, what are your images saying? Exactly what I said. Yeah. You, you as, as you start your business, um, as you're now approaching people, and as you're doing your style shoots and everything, what kind of a floral designer do you want to be? Um, start right there from the beginning. If you're putting work that isn't what you want to sell, you are going to attract those kinds of client. Mm -hmm. So if you get really annoyed by that, it's because your work is attracting them. So find out what is it. That you need what to change. That you need to change. Exactly. That, uh, How are these high-end designers getting their? Where are these high-end clientele? Where, how do they shop? Find out. Yeah. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Great. So now uh, a bride inquires from you. What happens next? What should they? No. First of all, uh, yeah, a bride inquires. Mm -hmm. What should they expect? Yeah, so say exactly what I was what saying, if we, if, we, yeah. if we come to an agreement about the budget, um, for us, I think when a bride is inquiring, the first thing we want to know is you really, can you afford me as a designer? And by say that, I don't mean it in that harsh way to say, I'm an expensive designer, no. I am simply saying, can you afford the quality of work I want to give you? Do you, do you is that what you want for your big day? Do you want quality over quantity? If your answer is more on quality, you're my bride. Okay. Yeah, then we start working from there. Then I'll start educating you. I'm there for you. I will guide you. I will help you. I'll go like, look, your budget is great. I think we can do this. We can do that. We can do this. You know what? This is not a priority. Remove it. This is a priority. Keep it on. You know what? You don't need to sit 
your floor plan we will we'll guide you in so many ways because a floor plan also influences the budget for example mm -hmm. round table can can actually cost less than a rectangular table because proportionally round table you are designing right in the middle almost 60 centimeters mm -hmm. then you have to think about all the other dry ingredients that are going right the plates the glasses wine this and that so you can choose to just re leave everything more lower and beautiful and elegant um, rectangular table however now you have to think of doing things across that's gonna cost you money. So when you approach a, a, a good designer, an experienced, let me say maybe, an experienced designer, they will guide you where you can actually cut and make the best out of your event. So that's what we do. So that would be our next process. And when they are happy with that, then we book them in, we sign them in. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll come back there. Mm -hmm. But l let's go back to budgets because ultimately it's about <laughs> <laughs> what can you afford? <laughs> How should a bride <laughs> interpret a budget? I think be real with yourself as a bride. I was real with myself. My, my fiancé, husband now, uh, we sat down, I was so excited. And that, in fact, the reason why I decided to do my own flowers was I realized I couldn't afford. And how I realized I couldn't afford is I did research. And then I realized, damn, okay, these things are expensive. I can't afford it. So be real with yourself as a bride. Get excited, but please be real. There is life after a wedding. If you can't afford something, think about many ways. Okay, if you are a bride who is keen on having a quality experience for yourself, hey, remember, there's nothing wrong with that. It's one time for many right and it's okay to want it to be the best there's ever been but if you can't afford it think about moving your date which i know nobody wants to do but think about reducing the number of your guests do you really have to have 150 or you can have 100 have it an intimate consider these things by reducing the number you're also reducing how much you're charged her table, isn't it? Think about using flowers that are in season. Be flexible. Think about working with colors that are in season. Don't go and look for things that are outrageous because that is what's making your budget go higher and higher. So be flexible in here first. Get what you want, but be flexible. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And now when I receive that budget, mm -hmm. what are the things that are included in the budget okay. that can help so, brides interpret. interpret. Like for mm -hmm. example, if I'm comparing your quote mm -hmm. and I'm comparing the other person's quote, mm -hmm. how should I like? <laughs> Do you mind cutting? I just want to say something. Don't, don't record that. <laughs> so we don't actually send detailed quotations to a bride before we retained. It sounds snobbish. Yes. If I say it like that. I know, I yeah, know. What it will make me, oh my gosh, like, oh, what do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying, praise must be, yeah, no, it will actually send a bad vibe because I, it doesn't, the way we do it, it doesn't come out the way I have to say it, but I'll try. Let me try and think. Okay. So, Catherine, to answer your question, basically, um, what a general quotation must include if you want to compare. like centerpieces, um, your bridal table, the ceremony structure, flowers, you know, whether it's in a chapel or it's outside. Now, a lot of weddings are happening outside. It's a lot of garden weddings, which is good. So those are the main, we call those priority, right? You have to make sure you have flowers at the ceremony. It's such, it starts there. It Ceremony defines the mood for the rest of the wedding. Mm -hmm. Then it's the pre-drinks area because you're gonna escape into pictures and all of that and your guests are gonna have like an hour of mingling. If you want flowers here and there, yeah. 
you can do that. And then in your reception, obviously, a simple bride who's on a budget can settle for only priority. You don't have to go overboard. But if you're a bride who wants to go a little bit lavish and a good experience, then there comes installations. Then the ceremony is like full of flowers. You are hiring musicians and all of that. It, 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 the bigger, it becomes bigger, 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 because her experience and expectations are more. More is more. And believe me, more is beautiful anyway. Yeah. Um, generally, for me, um, for, for, for our brand, we don't really give you detailed of everything until we know you can actually afford it because I want to say it in a kind way so that these brides think about these, uh, you know, think about us as well. It takes time to build a quotation. So if you're expecting me to spend days phoning, so I'm going to be phoning growers, I'm going to be emailing growers, I'm going to be sitting down, going back and forth, wherever that I have to find, to confirm is this flowering season, this and that. Time is money. I'm losing out for you to decline or to use that to compare. Is that fair? <laughs> it's not, isn't it? But at the same time, I'm also understanding that you need something to use to shop around. That's why, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an education thing. I think, start, let me start, let me go back again to the point I keep saying, research on the florist that works for you. So that you avoid going here. Yeah, you're also wasting your time as a Compare bride. Because you're also going to get very confused. Remember, floral designers have different signature styling. And you, by comparing too many quotations, you're actually comparing apples to oranges. It's not fair because the approaches are different. You have to first identify what is it that you're looking for. And then compare the floral designers that are on the same level of design, that's okay. But if the designer responds to you and say, look, you're looking at plus or minus this amount of money, um, I think it's fair for you to use it to compare because you kind of know what you need to know. But don't expect every florist to really give you an itemized quotation because what they have to go through to get you that itemized quotation is so much work, so much phone calls, so much emails. And after COVID, do you know what has happened? For us to get a quotation to some direct growers, they want confirmation first. Because what they did back in the day, they used to just book you pre-book and then you come and cancel. So it's, it's really hard for the florist. Um, and when they lose you as a client and you went for somebody cheaper, they get really bummed out because they could have used that time to be doing something to get them an earning. But then they put in effort to give you such a breakdown only for you to realize actually you can't afford them. Yeah, I think that's a lesson also for florists, not just for brides. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So what about the <laughs> DIYers, the ones who do it, want to do it themselves? Okay. What, do you, what do you have to say for them? Um, I've been asked this question in so many of my interviews. You know what, Catherine? DIY for a home celebration is amazing. It's beautiful. You can manage. DIY, if you want to do your wedding, um, there are two... There's the DIY where you're doing a wedding at a family home and your brothers and sisters and aunts, everyone is going to help out. You can manage. Then there's DIY for a bride who thinks going DIY is cheaper for me. These are the ones I want to just say something. Like you did It yourself. actually isn't. Exactly. <laughs> because you will, you will start seeing things that are popping up you didn't know about. Because remember, you're not a profession. You know, simple things like Oh, I actually need buckets to keep my flowers fresh when I collect them. Oh, I need my flowers to come in days before. Or they need to be open. You don't know all those things. Remember floral designer, you're also not paying for the cost of flowers and this and that. You're also paying for them to style the event. You can't style the way you want. So DIY can be really expensive unless seriously the only time I can almost I don't mind seeing a DIY is when somebody is having 
a, a family home, like, you know, if, if this turns into a venue and you grow some flowers and your daughter wants to get married and you guys can just help out and pick, that's amazing, that's beautiful, that's an experience. They don't have to look whatever, you know. But maybe also learn one or two things, attend workshops, just so you actually understand how to design. Mm -hmm. Also, how to keep the flowers fresh, how to cut them, a simple thing like that. You know, nipping a flower, stem, stems and veins that, make, that water travels through. If you're using a wrong pair of secateurs, you are closing that stem, hence you think you designed today, three hours later, you're not understanding why they are wilting, but they're in water. It's because of the tiny little thing you made. Like the... the yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... So I don't really recommend, honestly, Catherine, DIY, because it will... It always has bad results. Wow. Always. Mm, okay. Yeah. Unless it's at home. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to the quote, there's something I saw in an interview you did somewhere, mm -hmm. talking about logistics, and I thought, wow, oh, this yeah. is something people don't think about. Yes. In this, I'm going to speak to both brides and floral designers. Um, floral designers, if you don't... If you don't eat logistics, you're shooting yourself in the foot. How are you expecting to transport the flowers? How are the flowers coming? You're going to be charged shipping costs. And then you need to go to the airport or whatever it is to pick up the flowers. You need a mode of transport to do that. Back venue, back and forth, delivery and collection. You need to think about um, the people that you're going to work with. It's part of logistics. What if the venue asks you to do a midnight strike, like uh, that's after, after midnight, or a Sunday strike by law, I don't know in Kenya, but in South Africa, you have to pay double on a Sunday or public holiday or any time after 12 midnight. So if you didn't charge for that properly, how are you going to cover those costs? You mean if you make people work after midnight? Mm -hmm. You have to charge double. We charge an extra fee if we have to come back on the same night after 12 midnight because that's the law of South Africa. Get to know the law, actually. That's another thing. If you're a floral designer and you want to be professional, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, understand the law because that really can help you um, to, to build up a contract because you know the law, yeah. And public holiday, same thing. So it's a public holiday. Wow, yeah. okay. And then to the bride, um, yeah, expect to see your invoice right at the bottom with logistic costs because they're not part of designing. They are going to come anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. And styling is normally a cost there. I, I, yes. I think brides so, get so flattered. So like I want to, okay, quotations differ from mm -hmm. Stylist to stylist or designer to designer, right? Some designers will work in their method differently. They will probably, maybe in that centerpiece cost, um, everything is included. Or the cost per table. So I think it, it really is different from designer to designer. As long as you as a bride can understand that cost, you know, don't, don't be fooled or, you know, Understand where these costs are coming from and ask, what am I paying for here? That's why it's called itemizing costs, right? We give you, we're very transparent, itemized cost. The centerpieces, however we charge them, marked up, then our logistic costs, then this and that, transport. If we're doing a wedding out of town, flights, shipment, everything is included. Then you can see for yourself. So, you know, if, as a designer, um, I think it's in the conditioning of flowers itself when they arrive. The thing is, <sighs> Catherine, I get so excited when I talk about this. Mm -hmm. Somebody's day is her special day and his special day, right? Mm -hmm. You want to give them the flowers looking the best they is, the best. There's no reason for you to design with flowers that are semi-closed, that are not properly conditioned and they're only starting to look good the day after the event. Is it fair? Yeah. So I think the biggest mistakes is actually on the preparations of the event, not knowing how far in advance you must order. 
in how you must order. Do you know it also comes down to that? Mm -hmm. When you're ordering your flowers, develop relationships with these growers and wholesalers and, and say, okay, may I please have my tulips slightly open because you know your event is going to be two days later and they'll be open. Because mm -hmm. that's what you want for that day. Um, and then you design better. The other mistake is, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, is in the proportions of color, the use of color. That's why maybe it's worth um, investing in learning design principles and elements, what really they are, because color is a design element. And color, it's a color theory. It will teach you about color value, the value in the color, mm -hmm. as a floral designer, not as a painter. Mm -hmm. And then it will talk you about saturation of flowers and then color palettes, how you combine colors. Then it will also talk about the simple golden rule. I don't really want to call it a rule. A recommendation of using color in 65, 25, 10, mm -hmm. which is again the Fibonacci sequence, if you think yes. about it, mm -hmm. or the golden ratio. So this um, inexperienced use of color, when you think you go to the market and you use your intuition, you put, oh yeah, this works together. But when you order plenty and it's not really coming out, mm -hmm. or when you order flowers that have got high saturation for an outside event and the photographer you hired is not a natural light photographer that's going to ruin your pictures okay. completely there's a lot to think about other than just putting together a beautiful color palette and work or putting or just ordering flowers there is so much thought behind there that makes your work look good on the design, on the day of the wedding. Yeah, and because I think, and, and I think florists and even brides should pay attention to this mm -hmm. because sometimes yeah. you're going to, for an inexperienced florist who will do very high, like on the, the centerpieces that no one can speak to each other, you know, things like those. Uh, you see, proportion, right? Yes. Where you are taking a, a vase that is more, or like this one, oh my gosh, I really wish I could take that. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful, Catherine. Like, yeah. I keep eyeing it. This vase over here. Yeah. Gorgeous. You take that, and then you place it for a lower seating. How? <laughs> How do, it's not about people want to talk to each other. It's about they want to experience the entire room, but now you're blocking because you're so inexperienced, you're not realizing. If you're going to elevate, then elevate. Mm -hmm. So such that the flowers are still making a statement when guests walk in, but when they sit down, they are still really beautiful. They can see the entire room. If you're designing lower, Oh my gosh, and I'm just actually mm -hmm. referring to, again, design principles and elements. The topic form, where you learn um, different shapes of flowers, form is in the shape of an overall design, what it must look like. And it teaches you these things. It's called horizontal design. You know, when you design something lower lying, mm -hmm. or when you elevate something. So I think it's really worth for a floral designer to learn, because it's don't just base it on intuition. It, it will take you far, but you will make so many mistakes. Wow, mm -hmm. that is so very important. And, yeah. and I think so that, um, I mean, seeing the trans, you, you, yes, you have that experience, but you're gonna, the, your photos are gonna be your memories. They say you're, you're as good as your last event. Yes. Your photographers freezes moments yes. for us. That's what people are gonna remember you by. And so it's very important that uh, I think florists should think about how they're gonna look. And therefore tell us how should, what is the best way to hold a bouquet? Oh, I wish we had one. Okay, for and me, the it's face make. fronting. Um, the bouquet, number one, must be comfortable for the bride to hold it. <laughs> I don't understand the reason why some stems are left really long, because when they are long, they can't really hold them close to them, can they? Because mm. the stems are long. So now the bride will naturally pivot or hold it to what's comfortable for her. So it's how you design the bouquet to begin So it's with. a design problem it's when brides are not holding the yeah. bouquet properly. The, 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 the better you design your bouquet, the better the bride is going to hold. The more comfortable she's going to feel to bring it close to her. But if you really, it's, you, it's us that makes the bride, because the bride is going to use her instinct. 
even if you tell her, hold it like this, if it's not comfortable for her, she's not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's her day. She wants to feel comfortable. So you have to make your bouquet be comfortable for her. So that it can look good on the for photos. For your pictures. For your pictures, because you're going to use those pictures on Instagram exactly. to get you more people. So it's not just about the bride not exactly. getting the photos. It does affect your work. It's like your a centerpiece. If you place it on a table and you can see guests are going to walk through this way, make your best science face where the photographer is going to be. Think about these tiny little things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that you're, you're cheating on the other side, obviously guests are sitting, but photographers have sides and you will know because you're walking, photographers love uh, beautiful back, backdrops, so they would tend to photograph if they have a better backdrop, good lighting, understand these things because that's where they're going to shoot anyway. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Great. So this is this has been such an interview. Let me just see if there's any question. Okay. Um uh that that I may yeah, just um oh, look at me. Two, 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 <laughs> two more questions, eh? Uh -huh. Number one. Uh I heard you do not do mock ups. <laughs> number one. And the other question. Let and number two, her. now this is a professional question. You don't do mock ups in uh, you know, brides are like, we want you to do a mock-up of exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. In okay, Kenya, it's such a thing. Somebody said something for sure. <laughs> yes, it's true. I don't, uh, so let me maybe say it in the right way. I don't like doing mock-ups at all. Um, some of the planners I work with, I know they'll watch this at some time. They can testify. Uh, maybe we'll cringe and try to get out of it, you know. The reason for me not to really want to do a mock-up uh, based on so many things that are centered around my design approach. There's nothing wrong with doing a mock-up if the bride can pay for it because you have to buy the flowers in. So I would do them if they really, really want to say, I'm not going to decline. But they have but to pay my, for them. Separately. Yeah, my approach rather, um, why I don't like to do mock-up is because we are... Number one, a mock-up can limit me. Remember, my approach really depends on what's coming, what's in season. I also work with a lot of things that we forage, meaning I look around nature. And because nature changes a lot, it's, it's not fair for me to show you one thing and at your wedding day, it's actually a little bit different. So my reasons mm -hmm. for not wanting to do them are based, not because I'm just being snobbish, they're really based because it's harder for me I won't feel right if you have to come and just saying I've changed something slightly because I'm influenced by nature. Yes. And there's so no way it can be the same. Yeah, it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the flower you really want is probably only available two weeks before your wedding. And I can't do your mock two weeks before the wedding. It's too late already. If we're doing a mock, you know, we do it months before your wedding, but there's some of the flowers won't be available. So that's also another unfair part to a designer. Then my getaway is always, I actually ask the couples to come to the event I'll be doing so that they can see the quality of work I do. And there's no cheating when you're doing a real event. So I'll ask if they can come and say hi, so they can have a look and feel of what I'm doing. If they were worried about quality of flowers, then you can see them. And then the rest, you, you have to trust me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So my next question in terms of, I think you had answered it earlier. Uh -huh. Like uh, somebody said, you send somebody a proposal, this yes. back and forth, back and forth. Yes. When do you cut off? Yeah, like, avoid that back and forth, Catherine. Nobody wants their time wasted. You as the designer, you don't want your time wasted. Mm -hmm. You as a bride also, you don't want your time wasted because that back and forth you're doing as a bride, you could be finding the better vendor for yourself. And you as the designer, that back and forth you're doing, just establish things from the set go, and then you move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So it it um it's a that back and forth for me is actually lack of communication, or somebody is not saying something straightforward. Mm -hmm. You are afraid, the designer is afraid to lose that client, but rather say it if you know deep down in your heart you have certain needs or you design like this. 
because if you don't say it, why are you going back and forth? Then you, you are kind of want to trick them into signing, but that always backfires, you see, because it comes back. back the things you. you didn't say, and now yeah. it's coming back. So we developed um, a very, like a better system, you know. When I get an inquiry, um, and inquiries come different, so it's not a set, you know. Some, some go through our website where the questionnaire is already there, um, but the harder ones are just pop-up emails. They don't know who you are. They're just randomly emailing everyone. It actually starts with, hi there. Oh, wow, I like those. Hi there, please can you send me a quotation for this, 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 that. Um, for me as a brand, remember we spoke about that, that at a certain point you will know what kind of clients you need to maintain your brand quality. If I see that your request is not matching my brand values and quality, I'm going to politely decline you. Mm -hmm. If I can see that what you're asking and what you're saying is something that is intriguing, then I'll put an effort to respond to you and maybe say, would you mind if I can give you a call so that I can learn more about you, then we can move forward so we can avoid a lot of back and forth. So it's for, for us, it's easy. It's always, we are going to politely decline and I do educate in declining so they don't feel bad when they go to the next vendor. And I'll say the reasons. I don't think, unfortunately, I don't think we are a perfect fit because you're, um, I'm a, a, a soft and natural styling and this and that, and you're looking for more uh, opulent and roses only. I use a lot of textures, so unfortunately, we won't be a perfect fit. I'll be very honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. I won't try and, because I want the money, no, because I'm going to be- Style it differently. Yeah, to look. it's going to frustrate me. I, and, and, in big, and I can't separate my emotions to my work. So I have to be honest from the get-go. So how can people find you? Oh. Your social media. My social media. <laughs> my social media is, is where most, most people know me. So our Instagram page is the most active one, which is at Mabel M. Florals. That's my brand name. And then we've got a school page, Mabel M. Academy. Okay. Yes. Facebook, I don't have any Facebook account. Okay, I think there is. I, I just, I don't go on Facebook anymore. Okay. But I think there's a business page. I just don't have any. You know, it's so funny in Kenya. Uh, <laughs> I, I find a lot of designers saying that yeah, the inquiries they are getting out of Instagram, they are not as better paying as <gasps> the ones of Facebook. Really? It is something consistently I'm hearing. So that people are more, yes, they are active on Instagram, very, very active, but the people who come out of Instagram can't afford them. The wow. people who can afford them are coming through Facebook. But I, so I suppose it's just the way the market is structured I think here. it's about your, your audience. Audience. That should draw. Yes. So my audience on Instagram, our followers definitely are the ones that can afford us. We started Facebook before Instagram. So my Facebook business account page is, uh, doesn't attract the kind of client. So we, 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 we keep it for, um, just so the name stays on, on Facebook. I hardly ever get business on Facebook, mm -hmm. ever. We get business through um, Instagram. Instagram channels. Yeah, but yeah. I suppose it's just how the market is structured yeah. and things change. Um, yeah, and your algorithms and where you are attracting. There's a lot, yeah, behind these social medias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you're saying, one minute somebody's Facebook is actually better than Instagram. Oh, I've, I've never heard of that actually. Wow, that's. Okay. Such an interesting okay. thing. So one more last question. I know you need to go. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the flower festival. What are your general impressions? And then the last one is, when are you, uh, when are you coming to do a master class in Kenya? I can come tomorrow, honey. Mm. Kenya is now here we, in my we, heart. we actually have a school. The, oh, wow. Yeah, the, some, the business academy. You know that. Mm. You know, we do have oh a gosh, school. Oh my gosh, we have a lot to talk about. I yes, think and I think I, I see a lot of, uh, even I'm in discussion with Lillian a lot, oh and God. I see a lot. I think we should bring in, you in for a master class. 
We were bringing in Preston Bailey. Oh my goodness. When are you bringing him? We were bringing in before Corona oh, 2019. Okay. It's a story for another day. Okay, yeah. Let's just say, let's look more. Now we are more inward looking. Yes. Mm. So, my general impression about this particular one or about any other flower festivals? Okay, flower festivals, but this particular one, uh, your general impressions about oh, Kenya, okay. everything, and other flower festivals, okay. obviously. Um, I'll tell you about, I think other flower festivals, I am a big supporter of flower festivals because it's such a genuine channel that can be used to educate a lot of people between growers and designers, designers and growers in general public. I think it's important that festivals keep happening. Very, very important. Now, Kenya Flower Festival took me by surprise. I was blown, blown, blown away. The level of professionalism, the level of kindness, the level of passion they carry for flowers made me cry. Mm -hmm. And I hope that Lillian, Rosemary, you guys do them bigger and bigger, not bigger and better, I know they will be insanely, bigger and bigger and bigger to even educate because the thing with Kenya, why this one for me is much more intriguing. Kenya is a home of so many flowers throughout the entire African continent. You guys have more flowers grown in Kenya and it hurts to not see amazing, well, like much more designers coming out of Kenya, right? Yeah. Um, so this festival, the passion, the love of flowers that I saw that is being carried by the, 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 the promoters and sponsors and all of that, honestly, I cried on my own. I couldn't believe it. Such an amazing initiative. Absolutely love, but wherever you see a festival, you're most likely going to see me because I'm a big supporter. I feel like festivals are like a voice of Africa, mm -hmm. voice for those that can't speak, these designers that can't speak to growers, that can't have contact. These festivals are their voice. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm a big supporter. Yeah, wow. very passionate about them. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's <laughs> really amazing. Yeah. Well, viewers, you've had it for yourself. Invest in knowledge, persevere, and just put your name out there. Yes. And that there is an art to everything. Yes. There is a method to the madness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I hope I've, I've captured it. No, uh, that's exactly what it really is. Really well. It's art. Yes. And uh, we look forward to seeing you much more again during the masterclass. Yes, so yeah, I think we are going to talk about that. Yeah. There is definitely something we're planning. So, oh, embrace yourself. There is something insanely beautiful that's going to happen here in Kenya in yeah. a few months. Yes, <laughs> because you know what? You've, you've just really put it like exactly at the core. We are the biggest producers. You on are. the continent, mm -hmm. in, in, in the world, we produce, we are the third largest exporters of mm -hmm. flowers. It goes to show that we need to have the biggest flower designers coming out of this continent from Kenya. Exactly. You know, I had not looked at it that way. And exactly. now that you have said it, this <laughs> masterclass needs to happen. Yes. Honestly. Yes. We must be like, you know, the way we are producing the art. The athletes, the oh yeah, yes, Ooh, Kenyan athletes. Sure. I know. Yeah. So we must produce those kind of designers. Like, yes. do you know right now? I, I just had that paradigm shift, that light bulb moment. Like, what's happening? Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> you must tell them what we're planning, right? Yeah. Like, you're gonna tell it. Okay. Sorry. Oh no, we will tell you. Yeah. Yes. It's it's definitely happening, Catherine. It has to. Yeah. The thing is, you we need to use. Okay, we need to voice. Um, we need to voice ourselves first as yes. Africans yes. in Africa before we start. Before before the world can voice for us. Yes. Or Europeans or anybody else come in and voice for us. We need to stand up and voice. 
yes. for ourselves. Hence, the masterclass must happen, it will happen and showcase the beauty that Kenya has. Mm -hmm. I think it will transform or begin, I think it will be the beginning of a journey that is transforming the narrative between growers and them sending everything out yes. and what can actually happen here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it will be bridal. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me.